Well, we're finally having a sunny enough day to be able to bring the plants out to the greenhouse. These are our brassicas that we started uh, about uh, 10 days ago. And man, they're gonna love being out here on such a beautiful day. These guys look fantastic. I'm so excited with the progress that they've made. It's too cold to keep them out here overnight and we're not quite ready to start using our heat boxes. We want to have more plants out there that can go in there before we start using electricity to keep them warm out here. But this is just the beginning of seed starting season for us. Uh, we've got a lot to do. We're going to do more of that kind of stuff in the house today. I am so excited to share with you my brand new garden plan. Uh, it's a garden that we've never had before on the homestead and for the past few years all I've concentrated on as far as gardens go are what we can grow to eat and like food gardens. But this year it's going to be different and I'm so excited to show you my plan. Let's go. Now this area is something that Kevin worked on the last couple summers and he built us this outdoor shower. But I haven't really been super excited to use it because it's not really a very pretty area back here. That right now looks terrible because it's like super muddy. But for the last two or three days, I've been working on a garden plan to make this like a wonderful garden, sh outdoor shower kind of paradise thing. So I wanna show you and kind of tell you what I have in store for this area. So the garden is going to start like right here. And this is 24 feet here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put cattle panels from the edge of the garden area to like here, because then this will be a walkway for us to get in. But on the cattle panels, on the outside here, I'm gonna plant hyacinth beans, the ones from Baker Creek, they're gorgeous. So they will cover this entire fencing and give us privacy from the front yard and from the road. But all the major beauty is gonna be inside the fence. So let's walk around and I'll tell you what I have in store on the inside. So on the inside of the cattle panels, well, you'll be able to see all the hyacinth bean too, which is gonna be absolutely beautiful. But I'm going to plant the yarrow mix from Baker Creek also. It's got beautiful pastels, but I'm gonna interplant that with yellow and white zinnias. I think that the striking purple of the hyacinth beans with some yellow and white is gonna be just gorgeous. And on a lower level underneath that, I'm gonna do some sweet alyssum and the new variegated plantain also from Baker Creek. I'm super excited. But the more I think about it, the more I'm gonna like plant more things in there too, like maybe some pansies, just to give it some more color. So that's what we're gonna do over here. It's gonna be lots of gorgeous color. I'm also gonna do the purple hyacinth beans right next to this structure. And I'm hoping that it will climb up here to just kind of hide this area back here but I think it will give nice structure for the hyacinth bean to crawl up here. I think it'll just be so pretty. And in front of the shower here, I had wanted something that would climb, but I think I've changed my mind because there's not really a whole lot for it to grip here. What I'm gonna do instead is first, I'm gonna plant hollyhocks here, the Indian spring hollyhocks, cause they'll grow nice and tall and bring a lot of color to this area. In front of that, I'm gonna do um, an echinacea variety that looks like a big black-eyed Susan, and that is called the Paradoxa echinacea. And in front of that, there's a shorter, kind of newer variety to me anyway, of echinacea called Mellow Yellow. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I think it's gonna look so pretty. Now, this area over here, I'm kind of undecided about, and this is where I could use some help. I can tell you kind of what my plans are now, but I'm hoping to find some plants that are pretty tall, but sturdy, but something pretty tall. Now there's no like neighbors or anything this way, but it's just kind of woods back here, and I want the garden to be kind of enclosed feeling. So right now my plan is to do 
uh, spider plant, which is also called Cleome, mixed with foxglove because they're both kind of tall and beautiful. I know that foxglove is poisonous, but nobody's gonna be eating anything back here and our dogs won't be back here either. Now, at this point, I don't have a plan at all for the new canoe. <laughs> it might just have to stay there. I don't wanna do a whole lot there so that when we wanna pull it off and take it out and go floating or fishing, um, that I don't have to step on any of my pretty flowers. So this area might just have to be boring or some potted plants. That's what I can do. I can do some potted plants. The sign over here is already planted with some beautiful flowers. These are all rows of Sharon bushes that have been here forever and ever and ever. Also interplanted there are some irises and just some other things that produce beautiful flowers over the summer. So I don't feel like I have to do a whole lot here. It's just going to be naturally beautiful the way it is. My hope for this area is to create just a gorgeous little, almost cottage garden area. Maybe I can bring my coffee out in the morning and just sit and just look at all the beautiful flowers. You know, it is amazing to have an outdoor shower in the summer here because we work outside all day and we just get sticky and gross and it's just nice and refreshing to be able to come out here and use the outdoor shower. It really is an awesome experience. And I'm just so excited to share the progression of this garden with you guys throughout the entire summer. Very, very soon we're gonna fill up all of these shelves. So I have Kevin working on our expansion to the seed starting area. It's up in like the dining room. So we've installed basically the same types of shelves we have down in the hallway up here and we're gonna have three more uh, levels. So I'm gonna add uh, lights to all of these so we can have three more levels to start more plants in the house. But we'll still germinate down in the hall because of the seed mats, the heat mats. This will just be for growing. And this will just get us through the part of the year until everything can stay out in the greenhouse all the time. Right. I'm starting some of my pepper seeds today. I actually don't have them all yet. I still have some to get. Right now it's about eight weeks before the uh, last frost date and about 10 weeks before uh, I would start putting peppers and tomatoes into the ground. Last year I waited a little bit longer than I think I should have to start peppers and I felt like I should have started them at the time that I started tomatoes. And last year, I think I started tomatoes too early. So I'm flip-flopping that around, starting peppers now, and I think next week I will start tomatoes. Our last frost date here, uh, where we're at in, the, in southwestern Missouri, is April 15th. The tomatoes and peppers, though, I won't plant in the garden until about the first week in May. It's going to be really nice having those extra lights in the house because I'm also going to try sprouting some sunflower seeds in here for some microgreens. They're really good along with the lettuce that we have growing out in the greenhouse. These are the jalapenos. Last year we had so many jalapenos. I'm excited for this year. On one of my last videos, the one about seed starting, I showed you all how I start seeds and then I use my spray bottle to mist them with water twice a day. Well, someone actually took pity on me and found an easier way for me to do this. One of our viewers and subscribers, Nellie, sent me a mister in the mail and I'm so excited to use this. I've actually become kind of obsessed with 
spraying my seedlings now because it's actually really fun and easy. Uh, and it's really accurate and really gentle. Uh, you can actually find this on Amazon. I think we're gonna add it to our Amazon shop so you guys can check it out as well. Uh, but I absolutely love it. So Nelly, thank you so much for this. You've made my life so much easier and honestly, this is something that I never would have actually broken down and purchased for myself. I would have just stuck to my 99 cent spray bottle, probably from Walmart. Um, but this is awesome. I'll, I'll probably never go without this again. I really appreciate it. So there's so many signs of spring coming, getting the plants started, the greenhouse starting to get nicer, and also one of the signs of spring is that the baker creek monthly festivals are starting to start up again uh, a lot of you know about the big festival that they have every may uh, that attracts tens of thousands of people uh, but they also have a smaller festival the first sunday of every month uh, and we attend every one of those um, and so uh, that's a great place to come if you guys just want to hang out uh, we love to meet you guys and it's just a fun place to a bee. Yeah, they're called the Heritage Festivals and they start in March and they go through October. So the right. first Sunday of those months. So for sure this March, we're gonna be there and just hanging out. So um, if any of you are in the area or plan to go, we'd love to be able to hang out and meet with you and just sit down and chat. We would love that. Um, our intention is to go for all of them. Right. Uh, so if you have some uh, plans over the summer to come to this area, to the Mansfield, Missouri area, uh, first Sunday of the month, we'd love to hang out with you. For sure, we'll be there both days for the May Festival. Right. Uh, which is a Sunday and Monday, the first Sunday and Monday of May. Uh, but but keep that in mind. We'd love to we'd love to chat with you. These Baker Creek festivals are kind of special for us because. We have so many responsibilities here on the homestead that we don't get to travel to a lot of these bigger, you know, uh, homesteading conferences right. and things like that because we're just so tied down here with everything that we have going on. Uh, so the fact that Baker Creek is so close to us and that we can get there for just the day and come back home to finish chores at night uh, works out so great. So that is just the perfect way for us to get to meet some of you guys. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed just kind of hanging out with us a little bit today as we got some things done. I hope that you uh, are excited about our new garden as I am. I was really happy to be able to share that with you. Uh, if you're enjoying this video or if you're enjoying our channel, uh, please consider subscribing. We would appreciate that. If you know someone else who you think would enjoy our channel too, we'd love it if you would share it with them. And until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.